tragically, human beings are programmed to take cudgels up and swords up in the name of what they believe in. That's the problem, not anything else. So, Jordan and, oh, all right, oh, Kathy and Jordan. I, so what God was Stalin killing 30 million people in the name Very of? Very important point, a really seriously important point. Um, Stalin did undoubtedly kill some people uh, because they were religious. Most of the people that Stalin killed, and I have read the books, I promise you, were not actually killed in the name of atheism. No, no, you're missing my point. No, no. He was an atheist. No, I know. And he was killing people in the name of com no, atheist no, and not, communists. No, I disagree Sorry. with that latter bit completely. It's like saying Hitler was a vegetarian, and therefore millions of people died in the name of vegetarianism. He was a vegetarian, the slaughters and the deaths that he caused were not in the name or the cause of vegetarianism. It is very complicated to work out exactly what Stalin was doing other than... Not to me. The, well, actually, yes, you're right. The, the power structure was an uh, absolute pyramid. But it certainly, it certainly wasn't killing people uh, because they were atheists as opposed to theists. That wasn't the issue. So no, he was killing people because as a rational man, his conclusion that life was so unbearable it should be wiped out. Uh, you know, you guys who are in, well, hang on a sec. You, you guys who are in, you guys who are into, uh, you know, rational thinking, forget all the time that rational thinking can go in a variety of directions. It depends on your initial presuppositions. If you believe that life is worth living, which, by the way, under some conditions is highly debatable, you're going to come up with a pretty optimistic conclusion. But if you've looked at life and you think that the suffering of most people is unbearable and that life is evil, which is what Stellan thought, you have no problems whatsoever mobilizing everything you can to kill as many people as you can. And if you don't have any faith, like any faith in an, in an ultimate authority that says essentially that life is sacred, what's to stop you from doing that? But if the you fact have, that you have you good have it's called morality. Yeah, yeah where does that come from? Well, I, I Stalin and I differed in terms of morality. I would why? Actually, uh, why? Yeah, yeah. why? Um, um, you're being very rude, Jordan. You're being very rude indeed. Um, my, my, my morality is, as it were, on display simply on the way I actually choose to live my, my life. And the, I, I did emigrate to Canada out of choice. Um, and I hope that Canada hasn't Well, and I know you yet. deal with very difficult things. You yes, know? I do. I know that. And, and yeah. I'm not Stalin. And it, it's very unfair to say that anybody who doesn't believe in God cannot have a morality. That was the title That isn't of my... exactly what I said. I said uh, that rationality can go in two directions. That's what I said. Okay, Greta wanted a word here. The other here. thing about that ad that I think is pretty funny, because it's, it's not the part that people concentrate on, is the second part. Mm -hmm. It's like, don't worry, be happy. If that's, like, is that supposed to be the, the alternative good? That's what you're supposed to be doing with your life? If you don't believe in God, you're supposed to be not worrying and being happy. Wait, let me finish. Sure. The thing is, is that it's perfectly possible that the highest value to which people should be devoted is neither the quelling of worry nor being happy. And the fact that that is the other half of that statement indicates to me the level of moral reasoning that underlies the motives for putting the ad just, on the bus. Just curious, what's, what's more important than either of those things? Um, pursuing things that are meaningful, that's more important. Um, trying to order yourself so that you act morally, really regardless of whether or not it makes you happy, or maybe even, look, I, I just heard a, a journalist today, a, a journalist's wife, who talked about her husband in Sri Lanka, who pursued the truth knowing full well that he was going to be killed because he believed that the totalitarian atrocities of the state were mm -hmm. unbearable. Now, he wasn't not worrying, and he wasn't <laughs> being happy. And the idea that those are the aims to which life should be devoted is, Solzhenitsyn said, you know, that belief is demolished by the first boots that kick down your door. And that's absolutely right. Greta, do you agree oh, with the premise that, of the piece, which is that, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, the, it's over. the secular is of all we want? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's, you think that's true? Um, well, the thing is, is not exactly, because people can't do without belief. And so, you know, one of the things, and this is one of the things I think that's really flawed in, in the thinking of people like Dawkins, is that Dawkins believes that if people abandoned their traditional religious beliefs, including their belief in God, that they would inevitably move to a kind of rational, secular humanism. And I think that's completely absurd. I think people, like Dostoevsky thought, I think people are, we have very irrational souls, you know, very powerful, romantic, emotional, highly motivated souls. And the idea that 
the abandonment of traditional forms of religion is going to lead us to some sort of rational light is like, look at the 20th century. Why would you believe that, even for a second? Kathy, do you think the secular humanists have already won the war where it comes to the public space? No, I think there's almost a, well, then there would be no such thing as the culture wars. I mean, we wouldn't really be having this conversation. So um, I could be wrong, but just for the sake of argument, I'll say it's 50-50 and it kind of goes like this and it's yin-yang and that's, I don't think they've won. I don't think Christianity's won. I think that there's always going to be that Wouldn't fight. you say the culture wars are in remission right now? Not in my world, but that's Not in your world, okay, fair <laughs> enough. But the, the last American election was as about absent from culture wars as, you know, one, listen, of any of the last five or six or seven, I think there was a remarkable lack of culture wars in this last federal election in the United States. Do you I, not agree? I think we're listening to two different kinds of broadcasts and reading many different newspapers and, and we thought there was a war on. So uh, I guess uh, other people did feel like fighting it. Who's the we? Um, I'd say conservatives felt that their, I mean, to me, conservatives have their deeply held beliefs, liberals have their deeply held beliefs. The idea that there should be some kind of fakey unity was getting some of us uh, a little disturbed. And uh, so, yeah, I think in, in my world, which unfortunately there are two, it is a divided America, a divided North America to a lesser extent, um, we thought there was a war going on. Last so. minute to go here, and uh, okay, Rob Buckman, you get it here. Is there a part of you that wishes that Dawkins and Hitchens would shut up a little bit. <laughs> temper, uh, <laughs> temper what they say. It's simply in this, that there's a huge gulf between belief and behavior. Uh, belief is totally okay. Anyone could believe in anything, invisible flying spaghetti monster. But it's when you pick up a sword or whatever and you decide to kill your neighbor because he doesn't believe in the same color of invisible flying spaghetti monster. And in many respects, it's the, it's the goal to separate belief from behavior that really matters and make all of, all of these debates, you know, solved. I'm reminded by our producer.